People were drawn to the West because they believed by discovering gold, they could become wealthy. Tens of thousands of miners traveled to locations where they heard about gold findings after the California gold rush. Miners discovered silver in a mine in Carson River Valley of what is now Nevada. It was dubbed the Comstock Lode, and over a 20-year span, miners extracted nearly $500 million from it. Some mine sites developed into settlements. Children and women arrived to join the men. Families built churches, schools, and other structures throughout the towns to transform them into respectable neighborhoods. Some of the gold rush villages vanished, while others grew into established cities. Mine work was challenging. Minerals were extracted via placer mining from sand and gravel that was loose. The gold extraction was laborious. The majority of the gold was in underground rock veins. Therefore, miners needed machinery to remove it. Mining firms employed two strategies. Water under intense pressure was utilized in hydraulic mining to blast away soil and reveal the minerals. Hard rock mining required breaking up the ore and tunneling. Large corporations were in charge of mining by the 1880s. Numerous people lost their lives while searching for gold and silver due to the high risks associated with mining. There was danger in mining camps as well. Violence resulted from conflict over the gold. Numerous immigrants experienced vigilante violence after being falsely accused of committing crimes. The disappearance of the buffalo herds and the relocation of Native Americans to reservations led to a boom in cattle ranching. There were fewer buffaloes, thus there was more grass. Ranchers grew longhorns, a hardy breed that the Spanish initially introduced to the Americas. Longhorns, in contrast to other breeds, were tough, could travel great distances without much water, and could survive solely on grass. They fit in perfectly on the plains. Vaqueros, the original cowboys who worked on Spanish ranches in Mexico, taught American cowboys the skills necessary for managing cattle. Cowboys were not in high demand until the railroads reached the Great Plains, despite the abundance of cattle herds. Then, as towns expanded quickly following the Civil War, there was a large demand for beef. Ranchers in Texas sent their livestock to the east and to Chicago. From San Antonio, Texas, to Abilene, Kansas, where they were delivered by train to Chicago, cattle ranchers also drove their herds across the Chisholm Trail. In Abilene, Kansas, where the railroad and the Chisholm Trail collided, the cowboy was born. About 55,000 cowboys worked the plains between 1866 and 1885. Mexicans made up around 12% of these cowboys. African Americans made up approximately 25%. A cowboy's existence was challenging. In all types of weather, cowboys put in between 10 and 14 hours a day of work. They put in a lot of effort all spring and summer. They either lived off of their savings or roamed from ranch to ranch looking for odd jobs throughout the winter. Cowboys gathered their cattle in the spring and started them on the drive. This was the route from the plains to the Abilene, Kansas cargo yards. The days of the cattle drive and free range didn't continue very long. Many ranches perished in the 1880s due to bad weather. Others began enclosing their ranches with barbed wire. 